Jono, gearhead here at Competitive Cyclist. Hi, and I'm Ian, a gearhead with Competitive Cyclist as well. And today's an exciting day. We're gonna talk about a bike from Cervelo. They're bringing back an old name, the Cervelo Soloist. Who's it for? Well, this bike is for really any rider that's looking for an all-around high-performance race bike. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you're climbing every single day, might not be the bike for you on super steep grades. It just feels a little bit muted when you get out of the saddle. Gotcha. Uh, it doesn't jolt forward like some other bikes that I've had, like the R5, for example. Yeah, you're right on that and thing. That's like you know, straight up climbing bikes, just gonna destroy the climbs. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that being said, if you're a punchy rider and you're just trying to hold speed, um, let's say like a Spring Classics type of rider, it has a lot of wide tire clearance on it, and you can run a wide tire. Up to a 34. Uh, Is it up to a 34? Yeah, up to a 34. Nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, 28s on it right now, but they're they're real plump. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, the rims are pretty wide. Yep, yep. So it holds speed really well over some of the punchy climbs um, and descends really, really well. Uh, if you're climbing just for the descent, like if you love the descent, this is probably the bike for you. Yeah, and that's me, like all my riding. I live, you know, a couple hundred feet away from a really nice climb and I live for the descent, so I think it'd be perfect for what I want to do. Yeah, so today we were riding it on some pretty steep stuff. Uh, we were up around Guardsman's Pass and we were coming down and I really put it into some corners, put a lot of weight in that outside foot and outside handlebar and was really able to rail the turns. Yeah, I mean, I would take that crit racing and not be too worried about it. Dude, I know? was gonna say, man, like, I think it could be a cool crit racing bike. Yeah. Like, I know that a lot of people are like, aluminum, aluminum, and, and I bought into that as well. Like, both our bikes are aluminum for with sure. the rim brakes that yeah. we ride for crit races, but this at an affordable price point with the performance of carbon yeah. and the way it holds speed in the corners and i mean this could be an awesome crit bike maybe run a little shorter you know crank arm length so you can get around the corners a little bit and this for thing sure. would just eat up and for you, those aluminum bikes yeah and for you frame set one by yeah yeah, yeah i mean it looks like you, I, could, I, you could do it you could run the one by on there i like the one by setup it's kind of fun so predictable steering Predictable steering, very stiff in the head tube, um, which is nice for descents. It doesn't wander at all in the corners. So that's really nice. And um, yeah, I mean, the bottom bracket was, was stiff enough uh, to really like lean on that pedal, that outside pedal, and like really get your weight down. So, yeah. And we so should yeah. mention it is now threaded. So BB right T47 threaded bottom bracket. Yeah, which is. Nice and stiff down there. You can have a 30 mil spindle in there, no problem, which is lighter and stiffer. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that is a good quality of that, uh, and you can fit that bike. And for the whole mechanic, it's nice too, right? You yeah. don't need to buy the $500 <laughs> bearing yeah. press. Yeah, exactly. So, it just makes it easier for, for us average folks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so we talked about the bottom bracket. The other big feature and benefit is the cable routing. You want to run us through that? Sure, yeah. So, this will run electronic and mechanical group sets, which is nice these days yeah it's Every, getting harder and harder to find bikes right. that can do both right everything is typically integrated through the stem and then there's some sort of proprietary i mean this is still a proprietary system for running the cables but d-shaped steer tube or a crazy hole or you know the last s5 for example you had like a bolt length that was different for every single oh, thing yeah yeah but this one it's pretty simple you know you just run it through it comes out the bars and then it goes into the frame uh right in front of the head tube there and then you can you know run the cables through yeah. um as you would you know any bike so it keeps it pretty arrow but it's not completely hidden for the home mechanic that's nice that's another thing that's nice for the home mechanic on this bike you know the cable routing is a little more simple the head set and head tube area is a little yeah, more simple. Easier to maintain. Easier yeah. to maintain, yeah. yeah. So along with that T47 bottom bracket, the way the cables route uh, through the head tube is really nice. Yeah. Now we've seen some other brands do something similar, but uh, I think it's really clean how they incorporated it into the front end there. Braking options, what do we got? Disc. What? That's it? <laughs> Just disc. <laughs> Man, I know you love rim brakes. I ride a bike with rim brakes. You ever ride a bike with we rim both brakes? own bikes with disc brakes as well, so we're yes. not anti-disc, but uh, this frame. Only disc brakes. Huh? Only, only disc brakes, yeah. But uh, it's, I mean, that's it's that's nice. I mean, I was, in, I was. Uh, it rained yeah. for about thirty seconds on a ride the other day, and uh, as much as I hate to admit it, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I was going downhill, I couldn't stop, and this thing will stop on a dime. Yeah. Uh, I was going down uh, right by the chairlifts over there on that big climb where it's super steep. I went the fastest I've kind of ever gone on that road I was on. Okay, so <laughs> well, it gives we, you the confidence. We won't say how fast I was yeah, going, yeah. but it was fast, and I was able to modulate the, the brakes really nicely, kind of control my speed. There was a big, giant, like, industrial truck in front of me, and 
I did a little double wheel slide, but uh, yeah, you know, you know it, it slowed me down and I modulated him a little bit, so it, it was good. This one has Shimano disc brakes on it. You could run some SRAM disc brakes on it as well. Uh, the build that we rode today was the Altegra Di2 build. Yeah. And um, what, what's what's the price of that? And what other options do they have? Yeah. In the group for sure. So that one's sixty eight hundred, as you see here. Not a bad deal uh, for Di2 Altegra carbon wheels. It's carbon pretty wheels. awesome. I mean, that's yeah, pretty you amazing. Can, you can race that thing. Oh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, starting out, uh, you can get a frame set, 2700. Uh, not bad. Build it however you want. Reach out to our gearheads, me, him, whoever, whoever answers <laughs> the phone. But yeah, 2700 for that. You're going to jump up to, let's see, 3400 for a 105 Shimano Mechanical. Uh, they do offer the DI2 as well. So if you want electronic shifting, you can get into it at a pretty good price point. That's going to be 5200 for the uh, DI2 105. Um, and then, of course, SRAM options. So SRAM Force and Rival. Uh, Rival's going to be your entry from SRAM. Not bad pricing there. Uh, again, looking at 5200 So yeah. electronic shifting, 5200 Yeah, I mean, they're, they're keeping this as the affordable, everyday race bike, you know, amateur yeah. race bike. So, I mean, it makes sense that they don't come in red or, exactly. you know, Durace DI2, but we, yeah. we could definitely build that up. We've got some components and, uh, yeah, our gearheads are more than capable of getting yeah. set up on For sure. a frame like that. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's in line. I think the offerings are, are really smart from Cervelo on this particular bike. So now we talked about the build kits. Let's talk about where it fits in Cervelo's lineup. Um, I know it can be confusing. They have a lot of different bikes. <laughs> a lot of bikes these days. Yeah. So you have your R5 or your R series, which is your climb climbing bike. Yep. Then I would say you have your S series, which is your aerodynamic uh, road racing bike. And then I would say you have your soloist, which is this bike, yeah. which is kind of a mix of the two of those. So they pick the best of, you know, those two bikes, like to make it work and be an all around. Right, right, right. Yeah, those those bikes climb really well or yeah. are very aerodynamic. You go off the front and you know hold uh, you know your speed without too many watts you know killed. But yeah. this one's a good combination of the two of them. Okay. And then you have your Caldonia and your Sparrow. So the Sparrow is their gravel bike. Uh, with their gravel geo, you know, it's a little bit longer wheelbase. Uh, and then the Caldonia was kind of their all road, that's their all road bike, really. The endurance bike, as uh, some people may call it, endurance bike. So I think it'd be interesting to compare the Caldonia and the Soloist. Um, Just because of the like, price point, the people are getting into price it, point, they're really yeah. that bike. Yeah, yeah, bikes. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, they kind of fall on a similar price point. The R series and the S series are very focused on one thing or another. For sure. But the Caldonia and the Soloists are, they range a wide variety of riders. You know, it'll accommodate a lot of people. So I think those are the two that could be easily compared. When we look at a bike and we're sizing somebody up, they call us in and they're like, hey, what do you want? Or, you know, what bike should I buy? What size should I get? We always ask them about the stack and reach of their current ride, don't we? We do, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, the easiest thing to compare right, right. away. This is going to work for you. On the Caldonia, what's the, this is a, on their all road endurance. Uh, what is their stack and reach on that one? Yeah, so just looking at that. So the Caldonia, it's going to be 55.5 for stack. And then we're looking at 37.8 for a reach. Cool. So like you would, you would think that a, a road racing bike would be a little bit shorter mm -hmm. and a little bit longer to get yeah. you in a more aerodynamic position, which, which it is. So on the 54 centimeters one we were doing, uh, the stack is 54 centimeters and the reach is 383. So a little yeah. shorter, a little bit longer. Which we expect. Which we would expect. Yeah. And I could feel that today on the road. Uh, on some of the parts uh, that were flat on the road and I was trying to hold speed uh, at a, you know, a tempo pace, I was able to really get down, like kind of grab the hoods and kind of got my forearms on the bars and was really aero and it was, it was nice. an awesome ride. So we talked about how it compares to the other bikes in Sorrell's lineup. Yep. Um, now we should talk about the other bikes that we carry, how right. it might stack up. Uh, I guess those? Yeah, uh, I mean, riding it today, it was very reminiscent of uh, Pinarello. That's kind of what okay. it felt like That's to me. That's fancy. That's fancy. It is, yeah. The <laughs> Pinarello Paris, uh, when I ride that bike, it feels very similar to this one on the climbs, but I would say that this one descended a bit better. Like the front end of this bike and the way that it is designed and the way the carbon's laid up, it's not as chattery as the as the Paris is you know it doesn't like hit those road bumps and it doesn't take you off your line it doesn't walk away from you at all um I would say that out of all the bikes that we carry that is probably the one that you could compare it to okay the most to summarize my my you know all of my talking 
This is you do for, a lot. I do a lot of that. <laughs> this is a high performance road bike at an affordable price point. That's really for any rider looking for that. Unless you want to just climb all the time. If you want to climb all the time, this may not be the bike for you. But otherwise, this is the bike for you. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of climbing and just having an all-around bike, and what, what's like the number one question that we get when people call in and ask about a bike? What is the weight? What is the weight what of is the, the bike? Of the what bike? is the weight of is the this, bike? Am I going to be slow on this? Yeah. Is this heavy? <laughs> it's heavy. Uh, so <clears throat> pause the video. Let us know what you think it weighs down below in the comments. We're going to guess right now, and then we'll weigh it. So I have a, an advantage because I was on it this morning. But let's, um, let's grab it. We got to do the weight test. Oh, the weight. Test oh, the weight. You got to hold it up. I mean, you got to at least hold it. You can't just yeah, know what it weighs by this. standing next to it. So. Okay. You got your weight? Mm-hmm. Okay. So your guess. I'd say that this thing weighs 17.8 pounds. 17.8? Hmm, man. I'm going to go, uh... Oh, actually, we've got to take oh, the Oh, we got out. the bottle out. Come uh -huh. on. Oh, now it's 17 flat. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, still, I'm still saying 17.8. I felt it earlier today. All right, all right. 17.8. 17. 17. 17, 8. All right. Oh, hang don't, on. Don't, don't touch, stool. Don't touch that stool there, man. You gotta, we got to stop. We got to steady it. Pretty much 18 pounds oh, on man. the dot. We were off. We were off, but if I took the pedals off, it would be 17.8. So true, I true. win. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, 18 pounds on the dot. That's with pedals. That's ready to ride. Bottle cages. Uh, it doesn't have a computer mount on it right now, but, I mean, that's... A pretty, that's, I mean, that's... It's respectable. It's respectable. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the lightest bike in the world. And I think this backs up what I've been saying. It's not your climbing bike, but this is your all-around bike. It carries speed so well around corners when you're riding solo. So um, I think 18 pounds is, is totally fine for a bike at this price point. Yep. And you can always get it lighter. Yeah. You can always make it lighter if you want to. Yeah. So that's the Cervelo Soloist. Yeah. 18, 18 pounds. pounds. Size 54. We'll tag our DI2. Ready to race right out of the box. Ready to race. So if you have any more questions about the bike, uh, want to get one yourself, reach out to a Gearhead today. We can build it up from the frame, or you can grab one of these package bikes. Yeah, definitely. And please, like. If you have more questions, you just want to comment down below, you can do that. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're making a lot of these bike release videos, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. So uh, any subscription we can get to the channel is really helpful. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.